Good afternoon, afternoon, everybody, and welcome to our webinar. So today we're going to be focusing on how policing can best support their colleagues and the force in, in ensuring they're able to get the most help and support uh, out of the tools they're using for, particularly around the Microsoft 365 tools and teams. Uh, as a result of the massive investment that's gone across policing in the last couple of years to, to give us all these tools. As we all know, the change in policing is constant and the speed of change for all our colleagues is concerning and a challenge. Uh, and the rollout of 365 has been regarded very much so as a huge success for policing. But that speed of change has been relentless and there was and continues to be a risk that for some of our users, they don't feel as supported as they'd expect and perhaps we would have all liked to achieve. And this has been reflected in the community view or the feedback surveys which were conducted across all forces over the last couple of months. And as you know, the police digital service engagement team are really focused on listening to your feedback, building on the successful approach of the NEP and for ensure that we're listening to what you're telling us and helping that to influence the way we're working. And that's partly about what we're doing today as well. So that's why we've put this webinar together today. So on screen there are some of the comments that came back in the community feedback. And you can see there that uh, some of the colleagues who perhaps aren't in the change teams don't feel as though they got access to all the tools that they want, that the guides may have been produced, but they don't know how to access them. And those sort of things that we, we know we can address, we should, should be able to solve relatively quickly. But again, this pace of change means that sometimes we may have missed these or not made them as visible as we would like to have done. So today I'm joined by uh, Mike Cowley Freeman, who leads the L&D area, and Richard Atherton, who's one of the business engagement team as well. And both, you know, all three of you probably know, have been working very closely to roll out the 365 over the last couple of years. Uh, and I think, first of all, we want to highlight that there is quite a bit we've done already to help with the uh, learning centre and the customised uh, learning centre. We did a webinar and we're posting that into the chat now. Uh, and we'll add this into the video where you can learn how to build your own customised webinar. But I think it's also worth recognising that the way that people have learned now has absolutely changed over the last couple of years with the COVID and the remote working. So Mike, there's been a step change in the way that people learn and develop skills and perhaps sometimes we assume skills and knowledge that people haven't got. So how would you describe these challenges? Um, that's a, a really good question, Dave, and, and I think it's something that we need to look at, particularly around police learning. Um, my background coming before coming to the police digital service um, was working within a police force as a head of learning development. And I saw then the, the focus around traditional learning. And I believe that and I understand that a lot of individuals are looking for that, that guide, that handbook to be able to say, how do I specifically do this? I think what we're finding now is that the way people learn is, is changing. The way that people look to learn is changing. Um, there's more of a trying to uh, have that learning as a self-directed approach. The, the way that we work and learn outside of work is very much along the lines of I'll go and search online. And I think when if you actually look at the principle of learning within the year 2022, it's getting that balance right where people can actually go and find the information they're looking for access the information and then apply it to their own particular world, balanced by, uh, particularly within policing, a forced approach to what we're trying to do. So the challenge is there, but I do think what we have to look at with something like 365 is the, the wealth of information that is out there that whilst it is generic, can be adapted to how we do things differently. And it's how we then help people to understand that and then apply it in their everyday activity. Now, you and I have hosted lots of webinars and workshops, interactive sessions to, on some of the detail and the specific tools, but sometimes perhaps we forget what the foundations are. So, so Mike, what, where would you focus attention on right now if you're in a force with 365 on rollout? What skills do people really need to understand as a foundation? I think um, it, it boils into two areas. The first point is what, what technology do I have available to me and how can I use it? And then secondly, getting that generic information to understand the capability of the tool. Now, I know that fourth and we will look at some of the solutions that are already out there, but what we have to look at is if you look across the landscape, you have 43 different forces, 43 different ways of doing that. And then you look even further into the individual departments and teams and roles. There's different ways that people approach to how they do things. So I think what we should be looking at is helping people to understand 
what it is they have and what it can actually do. And there's a really interesting question that's come up in the chat around what facilities does Teams Live event provide that MS Teams doesn't? And that's a really good question to understand, actually, what am I getting here compared to what could I be doing normally? And I think once you have that understanding, you then start looking at your individual processes and say, how can I actually change this or change the way I work to then incorporate this new way of working? And I know we're going to be talking about the enabling center in a little while, which I think has begun to try and highlight some of those things. And I'm going to come across to Richard now. So you've worked very closely with uh, the program teams in Forces recently. But the change we have seen over the last couple of years is, is, is now down to leaders and supervisors and colleagues. How can we help to upskill colleagues uh, in using these tools? I think, um, well, I actually rolled the clock back a little bit, Dave, actually. And, and I remember I've been associated with police for 28 years and I remember where there was an information gap or a learning um, requirement. Um, staff used to say, get me on a course and put me in a classroom. And I, and I think that's um, definitely morphed over the years. We've, we've certainly seen the introduction of um, subject matter expert um, briefings um, where members of staff were abstracted and come into a, into a police station or a, or a department and, and provide a bespoke briefing to individuals. Um, dare I say, NCALP came along and provided a different focus and different way of approaching it. And then we started to get the uh, integration of change champions and super users. Um, however, um, it wasn't until we started um, being able to access our own training, uh, and that's really a, a modern phenomenon over the last few years, where individuals, members of staff, officers can actually access uh, tools and support to enable not only them to upskill, but also put the power of training back in the hands of supervisors. So supervisors can identify where those training gaps are, their training needs are. They don't have to wait to book a course or try and identify um, opportunities to upskill their staff. They can actually um, empower themselves and their teams and the individuals within their teams to actually um, upskill themselves uh, and, and quickly uh, um, go from position of a lack of awareness to, to greater awareness and greater understanding. So I think it's a, a really rapid change. It's one that policing uh, has struggled with, but is getting to grips with over the last few years. So Richard, again, often one of the change challenges that comes around is around permissions. Uh, some colleagues, uh, the, the management of the risk outweighs the opportunity and you know, perhaps we, we need to have a think about that and help the parts of the business to actually help the business engagement to help the uh, data protection teams and the information security teams to to think about it differently because richard you know i've put that little graph up on screen there which talks about you know the, the risk management outweighing the potential benefits but the reality is that could uh, could be something completely different if we look at the position we're in now yeah definitely I mean, and a part of it is actually about reframing the question so it's not necessarily about looking at uh, what the, the threat is with the new technology actually consider our old processes and what the threats uh, come uh, with that old process so moving to the new actually removes some of those challenges and some of those risks to the organization um, and again just thinking about that that graphic there that you uh, around that misbalancing there yes we have those threats yes we understand um, that forces could be subject to significant fines the reputational risk that that comes with it, the risk of litigation as well, and that all framed around that trust and confidence piece. And yes, I think we do focus on the doom and gloom, the risk. Uh, uh, but what we what we really need to consider as well is um, some of the opportunities that that come along with that. So um, our fundamental roles around um, safeguarding the vulnerable. You know, if we imp implement a new solution which better safeguards our, our most vulnerable, then surely we need to take some degree of risk uh, to, to enable that process. And a really, really good example of that is where Cumbria just stepped into uh, that, the, the MARAC process and used 365 to embed those new technologies in an old process and actually make it better. Um, give us more information, more data and make it slicker, make our partners more accountable uh, and actually um, identify all the opportunities that come with 365. So, uh, you know, it's really about reframing that question 
And, and I suppose one other appeal I, I, I often make when I'm working with colleagues in forces is um, the ISOs are often um, towards the end of the debate about a new process or new technology. Make sure you bring your ISOs in right at the very start. So when you've got that new piece of technology, you've got that new process, your ISOs are embedded in that project team right from the get go and you can have a sensible conversation right at the start. Absolutely, thank you. So Mike, where should if you if you've got 365 or teams and all these tools to do, where should your colleagues look for help, first of all? There are a number of places that I know as part of the original National Enabling Programme, we were able to create, uh, working very closely with forces um, to help them to, to support the rollout of 365. But there are also some fantastic um, opportunities and information externally. On this, the first slide, what you'll see is some of the things that you can look at internally. And by internally, my, I, my recommend is the first port to contact is to have a look at your force intranet, have a look at any newly created learning pathways. Having worked really closely with the learning development departments over the last couple of years, I know there's a wealth of information that is out there that they have looked to create to help the delivery of 365. So if you aren't sure where to look, get in contact with your force L&D department to say, we're looking for information. Is there any direction or information you can point to me? If you're aware of the old project team that was in place, and I know some forces still have a, a 365 project team in place uh, today, go and talk to them and say, where can I get that information? We as a programme also created a number of opportunities where people can access the information. And one of the, the areas uh, is what we're using right now is the webinars and the workshops. The webinars were a fantastic way where it gave us the opportunity to show the audience examples of where police forces had looked at a specific application, looked at the opportunity that um, 365 could bring and bring the two together. And I think what really struck me, and I know we've talked about this before on a number of occasions, the way that these um, new ways of working have been developed has been from somebody who's just had an idea. They're not a programmer. They're not, they haven't got the, the high degrees in regards to computer programming and, and technology. What they are is they're curious. They were interested to find out what was available and how it could change their world. So have a look at the webinars and we've posted the link to the previous webinars in there. There's a real mix of operational and back office um, processes that have been changed as a result of people thinking, how can I use 365 differently? One of the specific webinars, which I know you referred to earlier on, Dave, was the um, top tips. And that had, well, I think, one of our highest audiences over the last year. And what that was, was Tom Connor, one of our colleagues, coming in and saying, here's some of the shortcuts and here's the bits of information that could help you. We've put the specific link to that video um, on the, the slide here, but again, it's part of the webinar uh, list that you can have a look at. And again, it's all about just finding out what's available. We also have the Enabling Centre. Now, we launched that back in September 2020 to support forces as they were looking to develop through their use of 365. And what we were enabled, to, what we enabled the webinar, the sorry, the Enabling Centre to do is almost work on an 80-20 uh, policy. The information you have in there with regards how to use 365, we've got um, different ways of working and within the ways of working, I, I put a couple of snippets up on, on the previous slide. It's our interpretation of how a force may, or whether it be an operational or back office uh, role, could use the different aspects of 365 in their day-to-day -day activity. We wanted to make it the 80-20 because what we wanted to do was give you the basics or the foundation of how you could create and look at how you use 365. But then that 20% will be down to you as to how you then adapt that to your local requirements. We couldn't and we, we made sure that we made it very clear we weren't going to provide everything for everyone because that would have just been impossible, particularly with the way processes change. But with the information on the enabling centre, and the links that we have on the enabling centre around productivity tools should hopefully give you that real solid foundation of what can be done. So that's internally, but Microsoft being a huge organisation as they are, they also provide their own in, um, links and tips. And again, we've put a, a link up on there where they have a dedicated pages on their website to help you with the different aspects of 365. And again, there is a wealth of information. Also, I don't know if you've ever noticed, but on your team screen, when you have all your different functions and your team's chat, right in the bottom corner, there is a help button. 
that gives you that almost that instantaneous question and answer. This is what I'm looking for. And through the, the, the wonders of artificial intelligence and bots, they will take you to the relevant page where you can then start thinking, how can I use this application to um, deliver the work that I'm doing? And then finally, Microsoft do provide a, a service called the Microsoft Store Trainers. So prior to COVID, if you were to go into any of their large stores, there would be the, the store trainers who would be able to provide face-to-face uh, -face training sessions with you on how to use the different aspects of um, Microsoft and 365. When COVID happened, they brought that team in-house and they've been delivering a series of one hour live events like this one where you can attend, you can see the demonstrations, you can see the how to, um, but uh, how to do the different aspects around Teams, SharePoint, Stream, the Sway, you name it. And that gives you the basic foundational knowledge and information that you need. Now they do have, and sorry, they have provided this service and are beginning to provide it more specifically to forces. So if you are a representative of your force that you want to actually arrange something for your particular organization, get in touch with me and I can put you in touch with the Microsoft Store team. And what we can do is we can help you understand how it works, how the store trainers can actually bespoke and deliver something for you and what you would need to do from a force perspective to ensure that you can tap into this. Now, I will say at the moment it's in high demand because it's actually free of charge. So if you want to do something now and the timing is right, please get in touch. But there's hopefully, Dave, you've seen that both from the, the slide before and this slide, there are a number of different resources and there's always more coming. So if you can think of anything as an audience member that you'd like to see from us, please get in touch with us and we'd be more than happy to see how we can help you. And in fact, most of our webinars and the content we produce is based on what you ask us for. So we do try to do that as much as possible. Another obviously tip is YouTube, but you know, a little bit of caution, some tips for using YouTube. Who do, who do they work for? Do they work for Microsoft and uh, how recent is the video? And of course, the PDS uh, YouTube channel where all the webinars are, there's lots of help there. Yep. So how would you help a colleague who you're coaching to, to learn some of the skills? So somebody rings you up and says, how do I set up this on Teams or 365? What's the best way of giving them the skills moving forward? I think the best thing to do and uh, take a step back. The usual way is for someone to sit alongside someone or do it remotely, just give them a quick demonstration or do it for themselves and then they move away. We'll get a, a minimal amount of knowledge share and information that way. What I would suggest is that if you know about 365 and you're looking to help someone, help them by working with them. Get them to, to learn themselves by tapping on the keys, perhaps making a few errors and mistakes, but helping them understand where they've gone wrong and how they can go about uh, rectifying that situation. It is learn through usage. And I think I've always used an expression, educate to influence. I think the more opportunity you get people to understand what they're doing, why they're doing it and how they're doing it, they become a, a real advocate of what you're trying to do and what you're trying to achieve. So don't just do it for them, sit alongside them, help them, take them through step by step, get them to do it with you there to provide that support and then show them where they can perhaps find some uh, supporting material information they can refer to for the next time they need to do it. And one of the tips I always say is rather than just showing them on screen by sharing your screen, get them to share their screen and, and talk them through so they're doing the clicking because yeah. that memory really does help. And that sort of brings us on to how others can help. And Richard, perhaps you could explain a bit of work around the champions work you're doing with forces at the moment. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so again, building on the comments you both made there, it's about um, that's very much the ethos of change champions. So um, a member of, of staff in a team, uh, or across a couple of teams who have um, a little bit of confidence in the new technology, uh, who have um, a real enthusiasm to bring change to their particular team or a group of teams which you work closely with. And that's the ethos around Change Champions. And that's the work I've been very um, uh, proud to, to support both in uh, NEP and PDS now. So, uh, and it comes from my experience of uh, being a change champion myself. So I was a super user back in South Yorkshire a long, long time ago with the first iteration of Blackberries. I ended up uh, running the network in force and very much enjoyed working with some really enthusiastic uh, staff. And it, it started uh, last year, we, I started to run a series of upskilling sessions for um, what I would loosely call change professionals, but what they really are, um, project managers, business analysts, all under one hat, 
Um, so they take on the role also of uh, change champion managers. And it was really to for those forces and individuals that started to explore the concept of change champions and how they could help in, in delivering digital change right to the front uh, front line. Um, and, and it was I realised there was there was quite a bit of a, a lack of understanding and experience in that. So really what I wanted to do is, is provide a bridge uh, to those uh, members of staff up and down the country that really wanted to learn a little bit more, understand a bit more and, and, and try and develop and flesh out that network. So we ran those couple of sessions started around uh, what makes a good change champion and then it built on that to um, how do you keep that network of change champions alive, active uh, and developed. Um, but it's going further because we've we've had some fantastic support nationally now and uh, we've had almost every single Home Office Police Force um, join our Change Champion network that I've set up that runs on a regular basis, uh, on a monthly basis. We're looking to expand that further and I'll talk about that in a minute. But um, really uh, how we're developing and taking it further is around three S's for me. One is support, um, so delivering support that uh, there's a value to those individuals, those change professionals, so we make sure that the content is good. Um, sharing, so we're trying to encourage a network uh, to enable sharing an opportunity um, so that forces can talk to each other and actually really lean on uh, some of the skills and, and, and capabilities they've got. And then scanning, I think is really important as well. There's lots of really fabulous stuff going on out there and I'm trying to encourage that scanning and, um, uh, and um, uh, awareness to improve. So the three S's I'm really building on that. Uh, but the network continues and this is where maybe the, my first ask for help is um, I'm always looking for topics to deliver in that those change champion sessions. So, you know, if you if you were uh, have a really great idea, you want to be part of this network for a start or you have a really great uh, idea about some of the topics we what we might want to cover, please drop me a line, let me know. Uh, and we can certainly incorporate in the next few sessions. Um, and, and as we go forward, what I want to do and we are building right now is uh, a Teams channel, which I'm loosely calling the National Change Champion Network. So not only will it include those um, uh, uh, individuals that already sign up to the Change Champion Network, uh, what I want to add in is um, some, some of your best change champions from your forces you know, a handful of individuals who really, really know what they're doing, uh, are really competent in their role as a change champion. So again, if you uh, have some ideas about individuals you want me to add into that team's channel and, and build that network, start building a really enthusiastic community, please drop me a line, let me know. Uh, but really that's that's the, uh, the progression, the direction of travel, Dave, and it's really, really positive at the moment. Thanks, I'll just pop one question to you, Rich. Um, Change Champion Network is it opening up to those outside the 43? Well, of course, PDS membership is open to all law enforcement in the UK. Yep. So absolutely. Absolutely, yes. And that's part of the development I want to include all those that are non-home office and really get some uh, some knowledge sharing outside of those 43. And another question that popped in there was around um, if your forces already has access to the 365 tenant through the government uh, scheme, could police force members access the PDS enabling SharePoint page we've just shown? A um, bit of a complicated answer to that one is yes, colleagues in forces already have access to that, but we can't have every member of uh, UK policing in our tenants as a guest. So you can re easily replicate it and the webinar that we've done shows you how to do that. And of course, if you reach out, we'll be able to provide some support and help around that. And perhaps that brings us nicely on, Mike, to a point around how Alan D and the internal comms teams in Forces, um, they have a, a big role to play in this to help to, to signpost people to the training and make sure the training is available. Um, how can that how how can those departments particularly help with the rollout of this? I think if I look back in my sort of experience working in policing and also in the um, private sector as well, the roles of LMD and comms, internal comms, do work very, very closely together. It's a question of LMD providing the information and the tools and the training to develop new skills and capabilities, and for the comms teams to to work alongside LMD and to let everyone know that there's these opportunities to learn and develop. And if we particularly start looking at what we addressed right at the beginning, Dave, around the whole 
getting people to, to self have self-directed learning, to, to choose their own learning. It's understanding where they can access this information. And I know over the last few years, you and I have worked very closely to, to bring the L&D and comms communities together to try and help them to understand each other and what they're doing. So again, I would stress, and following on from a plea from Rich earlier on, it's my plea to the L&D and the comms teams, get together, understand what the information is that the, the users are looking for, find a way of using the internal mechanisms to provide that information. And if there's anything else that people are looking for, get in contact with us through the, the form that we've uh, supplied and we can help you. But I really think it's that whole creating a change culture, creating new ways of working, helping people to understand what they can do and where they can access, access that information from. Thanks, Mike. That's that's ideal. Now, if anybody does want to get in touch with us, you can, of course, use the contact form on the PDS website. It's it's all on there. It's very easy to access. And uh, I'll just pop that on screen so you can see that. And one of the latest things we've just popped in then as a, as a request and actually from feedback from the uh, digital summits last week, you can now see even when you're not a member of the tenant access to uh, to, to get into and see some of the uh, solution catalogue. So again, that is now online on the PDS website and there's a link there that allows you to request to join the actual PDS tenants and have access to that. And that access to that gives you access to the force collaboration team channel where you can share and discuss issues that will give you access to the enabling center where you can get access to the content that we've been talking about today. So there's a lot of help out there for you in terms of this. Also, in terms of what we've got coming up in the next couple of weeks, um, we have a next week we are joined by the boss. So this webinar, that webinar has to go well. Uh, Ian Bell is joining us as the CEO of the Police Digital Service and he was the co-chair of the Police Digital Summit, which took place last week. Now we had 370 plus police and technology experts in the room uh, last week to talk about things. So we're going to give you some reflections on what took place. We have the tasking workshop taking place on the day after, which is with Microsoft, where we follow us on from a webinar a couple of weeks ago, where we're looking at how you can use the 365 platform uh, in a very secure way to operate, where either right up at force level tasking coordination all the way, all the way down to a specific department. As you know, the uh, National Police Roadshows is taking place in the middle of June, so we won't be having a webinar there. We always uh, avoid having the conflicts where we're competing for the same uh, people. And then the following week, we have a webinar uh, on the 22nd of June for the Commons Data Rest. You will notice a gap there for the Queen's Jubilee. We know a lot of people will be taking some extended leave then, so we're going to not hold a webinar to, to reflect that. So that just gives you an idea of the things coming up at the moment. So always lots more coming up. There's definitely a plea from us. If you are developing anything or you've got good practice to share with other forces on how you're helping your colleagues in forces make the most, uh, not only of 365 technology, but some of the other national technologies, please get in touch with us. Share it into the force collaboration team because we're, we're not competing with each other. We're competing with the criminals and we're trying to keep people safe. So please get involved and join us. I can see if, just see if there's any other quick questions to come in quickly. Uh, I don't think we have, so we'll get to the close and we're back on time 100%. So hopefully you'll join us next week when we reflect on the Police Digital Summit and the fantastic event that took place last week. There's always more help available from the PDS, so please do reach out.